Hey, we're here. We're here. Look who's arrived. I've arrived. Thank you for your patience. Uh, hi, straight. How I'm, are you, mate? I'm doing great, Pete. That's good. How are you doing? Good. It's good yeah. to see you. Yeah. Um, it's good to see this Crown Zenith box, this Elite Trainer box, oh. is still sitting here unopened. Which is good because in the in the Goa Games factory, there's always a very good chance that this shit doesn't stay unopened for a long time. Um, but as you can see, right, from up in the screen behind us, as it rotates through, yet more patrons. Oh, it's so good. It's so bloody good. Uh, and I'm just going to, while we're on the subject, say hello to our patrons. So a big shout out, um, a huge mammoth monstery. Thank you so much. This is amazing. Huge shout out to our $15 per month patrons. Resonance, Simi Cat, White Monkey. You're all wonderful. Thank you for your generous uh, patronage. Um, to our $12 per month patrons, uh, Gamma, uh, and also Serene Sietzma. Um, Star Saber. Star Saber, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And to our $8.50 patrons uh, per month, Firestorm and Drifter. We appreciate you all immensely, and of course, being patrons, you're into our monthly prize draw, which this month is this box of bloody goodness, the Crown Zenith Elite Trainer yeah. Box. It is beautiful. It's a thing it of is, beauty. And, and you're not wrong when you're saying that it, we're lucky it's still not open, because I've been eyeing that off. Every time I've been in the studio, I've gone, I just, I just want to have a sneak peek. I, I don't just blame you, mate. I don't yeah. blame you. But, you know, whoever wins this um, out of our patrons is going to just have to do a video and just let us so. know and show us, which yep. would be really nice. That'd an, be great. An, an unboxing video. An unboxing video. Yeah. We could even show it. Um, our $15 per month patrons, by the way, they get a special one-off annual oh. release of merch. Ooh. All right? Um, I have seen the early designs. Oh, oh, oh. I, I, say, I tell you what, if, like, if you like games for breakfast, mm. you'll love this design. We're not going to show too much away just yet, um, but very bloody good. White Monkey in chat, and hello to everybody in chat tonight. Great, great to have you with us. Pete, you missed the excitement. Stick subscribe for the 427th month in a row. What a bloody legend. He really is, and it does feel like he's been been with us that long. I, th I think it was... I mean, that's 40-odd you know, years. It, it is, yeah. If we're being I'm honest. Gonna say, yeah, I'm already feeling old enough. I don't need to feel... Uh, Me too, mate. You know, you know what? We are older gamers. There ain't nothing fucking wrong with that, if I can just say. Um, we play games. Mm. We play the games that, you you know, everybody enjoys these days. But you know what's good about being an older gamer? That we are lucky enough to have played all of the shit before us because we've been around that long. Yep. You know what I mean? And we've seen gaming grow up. Like, can you imagine kids these days... Just going, oh, I know the latest Xbox, and you don't know where you've come from. And you have no idea where you came from, what, mate. Yeah, seeing, like, well, the, the last Star Fox was on the Wii U, but seeing that, and then going back to the one on the Super Nintendo and going, what the shit is this? What but the, the day, shit is this? That was amazing. It was huge. It was so good. The, was... the, the FX graphics chip on the Super Nintendo, man, it was, oh, it was so good. Hey, you know, um, having a Nintendo 64 where, you know, the release, the, the amazing release that came... With uh, with Donkey Kong Country sixty four, mm. which was to take the bloody the the memory pack out of the front of it, and I'm talking about the console, yeah, and slip in this brand new memory mm -hmm. pack and increase the fucking power of the sixty four. So bloody hectic. Good. Um, Gamey Game Face high and seeing resonance. Oh my god, seeing resonance. Nezinance. He's, he's one of our Patreons and he's also subbing on Twitch. Yep, you're a How wonderful human being. So bloody Thank good. you so much. We love you. Uh, gaming on a 386 PC from Fat Gamer oh, 1975. Oh my God. You're our boy. Love you it, are our it. boy, Fat. You know where it's at. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can I just say, just quickly, sure. right? Guys, become a patron, okay? Great benefits. We'll give you the shout outs. We spin you on the television. Um, I have already sorted out the giveaway for next month. If you like Lego... <gasps> I like Lego. Can I be a patron? I know you like Lego. No, you can't be a patron, I'm sorry, because you're already a patron. Oh, you give so much yeah. of your time to this mm. great organisation. That is true. If you love Lego, oh my God, you're in for a treat for what you could possibly win next month. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. And by the way, it's the 22nd of March. So I think uh, next Wednesday mm. is when we'll draw um, the Elite Trainer Box. Ooh. So... Uh, keep an eye out for it. So, so you've still got a bit of time. You've got a week to get in and become a Patreon to win this elite trainer box. White monkey loves Lego. Yeah. Um, you asked me how I was. Mm. You know what? I'm not great. No? If I'm honest, I'm not great and no. I don't mind saying it out loud. 
Tell me how many viewers we've got on Twitch right now. Uh, we have... How many concurrents? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me... I don't, have, I don't have enough screens for all the information. What have we got? 11, 11 concurrent 11. viewers. 11 people. Now, I'm just going to say thank you so much to the 11 of you that are with us. We love you. And you're with us just about every week. Mm. Get some more people in this fucking room to see this beautiful thing that we put together every week. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. Clip the shit out of this. I don't care that I'm swearing. Go and find some of your fucking friends and bring them in because we have gaming goodness up the wazoo and we want to put it up their kazoo tonight. Go and do it. Share this shit out. Tell them to come and hang out. Tell them to come and watch a real show. A real game show. That this actually is, plays games. The go a game show on a Wednesday night. Get it up here. Anyway, what are we talking about tonight? We were talking about you weren't, uh, weren't feeling particularly well today. Um, no, I'm feeling all right. No? You didn't, you know, you haven't done any extracurricular activities that may have strained something a little bit, yeah? Uh, yeah, well, if I have a heart attack tonight, um, I'll need you to call an ambulance because I'm feeling a bit tight up here. I'm feeling a bit tight through my shoulder. I don't know if it's heart attack um, worthy, but it's probably because I've been wrestling. You've been wrestling? Oh, that mm. sounds so cool. Yeah. Is that with, um, what's e EPW? EPW, yeah. yeah. Explosive Pro Wrestling, which are a Perth mob. Oh. Uh, I've been I've started wrestling training. Yeah. How's that um, been working out? It's for you? been so good. Yeah. It's been so much fun. I've posted videos on my Instagram uh, at PD Perth if you want to see it. Um, but I'm having an absolute ball, and I've been learning break falls and somersaults, and uh, we're starting to talk about entrance music oh. and videos and all that sort of stuff. I, I, I've got to ask, what are you what are you leaning towards for your entrance music? I'm not, I'm not entirely sure yet, no? uh, to be honest with you. I'm I'm really I'm really not. I mean, I don't mind Don't Stop Believing" by Journey. Yeah. Um, you can you don't stop believing. Yeah, no, I can um, see you doing that. Thank you, Tidge. Thank you, Tidget. Good to see you, brother. <laughs> uh, what's your WWE name going to be? Um, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe... I was, we were tossing up maybe it's The Dad. The Dad. Yeah. The Dad. Because people know me as a dad, right? Okay. Um, so I'm thinking maybe The Dad and my, um, my finishing move. Um, is either going to be Sweet Dreams or The Nighty Night, right? And it's either going to it's be... It's got to be The Nighty Night. It's either going to be a sidewalk slam yeah. with a rock, yeah. right? rock a bye baby. <laughs> or it's going to be a an epic move into a sleeper hold, oh. right? For The Nighty Night or The Sweet yeah. Dreams. So we'll see. I don't know. We're having a chat. It's a bit of a laugh and all this sort of... Yeah. You know. um, Gamma, that's not a bad suggestion by Gamma. That's Amore. I was trying to think of like dad rock sort of song dad rock yeah dad so like rock. i'm thinking things like can't not a little bit earlier than the kansas area maybe like you know the band america they did horse with yeah no yeah, name yeah, and, yeah 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 so something along those and those kind of lines yeah. with a horse with no name yeah. it feels good to be out of the rain the eagles um what about cat stevens well, I mean, Cats in the Cradle would yeah, the fit cats with, in the with cradle, your, your, your rocking... Yeah, coming out, yeah. the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon, and I'm coming out with the bloody uh, little boy mm. blue and the man on the moon. It'd be pretty cool. Daddy cool. cool. Oh, hey. yeah. oh, that's Eagle Rock. Yeah, yeah. I'd have to drop me pants. Uh, that, yeah, that's I'd have it. to drop me pants oh. from the start to the finish. It's cool. We do um, love a, a bit of wrestling here, and we cannot wait. If you're on it, following on our Twitter at the moment, we actually have a competition going right now. Yeah. Uh, where you can win a copy of w, um, WWE 2K23. What what at? What what at? Um, Not WWF. I got excited one day. WWF came knocking on my door, and it it's took a world me. wildlife. I know. Oh, I, I was very disappointed when I when I found that. Uh, the that the only issue that I have with WWE 2K23 mm -hmm. is that um, they said that there's somebody on the front cover, but you can't see him. Yeah, I don't know. There's just nobody on there. I think I think we should. He's uh, invisible. Yeah, like. like uh, some guy should, called uh, John Cena. Uh, yeah. Well, so, let's, so let's, have, let's have, have a look. See show you, me. See if you guys can see anything. Like, I can't see anything there. I can just see the text. I just. Yeah. Okay. No. I can. Yep. Yeah. I can only see. Like, retweet, and reply with your hot WrestleMania prediction. Um, reply with hashtag mm -hmm. Goa Two K Twenty Three, yeah. and I, I can't see. Like, there's a big space next to all yeah. of that writing. There's not, there, but there's nobody there. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's an yeah, interesting design choice by. Uh, maybe they by fuck, fucked up with the green screen. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe John, this John Cena guy, he wears like a, a zoot suit mm. with all you know, and it's all green, and they they fucked it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah. anyway, definitely jump onto our Twitter game on Oz right there. 
like and share the post and reply with who, your hot WrestleMania prediction. I was talking with Natty about this earlier on, and I reckon my WrestleMania prediction would be the Undertaker coming out of retirement oh. and just dropping from the top of a cage onto a whole heap of people and taking oh. them all out. Could you imagine? Um, yeah, you're right, Tidge. I will be the cover of 2K24. Yep. <laughs> um, except it's going to be called OK24. That's right. Because <laughs> uh, that's about as far as my wrestling career will be. Just OK. Mm. Um, yeah, cool. All right, this is this is a wicked giveaway and a big thanks to mm. uh, the legends at 2K who support us so much, 2K ANZ. Mm. Uh, thank you so much for supporting us and for giving us the stuff to give away. So Unreal. That's great. So uh, we should talk some, some game news. Let's talk some we? game news. Yeah. yeah, we are a little bit later on going to be playing a game. Um, mm -hmm. Aussie Broadband... Thank you so much, Legends, for jumping on board as you do every week uh, and signed on with us again for 2023 with the bloody good game of the week. Work in progress, that title. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, yeah, that'll happen a little bit later on in the show. But what's what's floating around, mate? So, bit game tangentially thing happening here. You mm. may have seen earlier in the week, tickets for packs have gone on <gasps> sale. So, I'm very what? excited. I know. I'm, I've got my early bird ticket. I've uh, got my three-day pass. Now all I need to do is convince work to give me the time off and get the yeah. money to buy a ticket, to buy a plane part, ticket and accommodation. Do you get a badge? Do you get a badge with your three-day pass? You, well, you get a three-day badge. Three-day badge. Yeah. yeah. And they also have released, for, for those that, that do streaming and are in the media as well, they've got um, media and creator badge applications as well, so you can jump in and get those. But It's so funny seeing people yeah. like um, jump on Twitter. I've seen a lot of people jump on Twitter as creators and go, I'm going for my creator badge. Wish mm. me luck. Mm. Uh, and it, like, you know, that's, that's cool and everything, but um, good luck to you all. Go and get mm. that creator badge and go and have some fucking fun as a creator. Oh, it's a, it's a can... special thing to walk around PAX as it is, but when mm. you're walking around PAX as like a, you've got that, cre you got that creator swag. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, like, and, and the badges are different colors, so you can tell straight away if absolutely. someone's media or some, someone's creator. Yeah. And it's like, you're, you're a creator? You, I'm a creator. We, we're creators. Mm. Create some shit. Go and create some shit. Don't be a creator who just goes to PAX and just is just a person who walks around. You just you may as well have just bought a three day pass. Mm. Go and be a creator and create some shit. You, you know, know who creates good stuff at PAX? We do. Jerd, well, we well, do. Yeah. Jerdman. Oh yes, Jerdman does. Jerdman's yeah. really good. He like he like live streams the shit out of PAX. Anyway. Mm. But it's it's going to be fun. Uh, Goa went last last year. We had a, a panel that we were on. Um, we had our meetup as well, community meetup there. It was just so much good fun, and cannot wait to see what uh, what PAX this year brings. I was really surprised by how many people rocked up to the community meetup. You reckon? Yeah, I was surprised by how many people from Perth rocked up to that meetup. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, and uh, it was really nice to have the team together there. Mm. Um, like a lot of us from the, oh, the yeah. Goa Core Content team went. Uh, and we all had breakfast, which was really nice on a Saturday together. That was so good. That was so good. Um, but the, the thing is, like, I'd love to do that stuff with as many people who are in our community as possible. So, mm -hmm. yeah, get along, guys. It'd be great to see you. Maybe we could do a, uh, a pre-PAX event. Pre-PAX? Mm. Yeah. Mm. I'll have to have a bit of a think about that. We will. Mm. But, yeah, so if you're interested... Go and grab your your uh, PAX ticket. I did. I did think I saw something about how they've sold twenty five percent of the total allocation of three day badges already, and it yeah. only opened yesterday. I think that's bullshit. I don't. I think that's absolute I bullshit. I, 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 think, I think it's no, the no. biggest load of horse shit. They all say that. Oh, we're seventy five percent sold out. Get fucked. You're not seventy five percent sold out. No, no, they're twenty five percent sold out. Oh, we're twenty five percent yeah. sold but, out. Get fucked. You're not twenty five percent sold no, out. No, I, I can believe it because the people that that want the three day passes are the people that have been planning to go to PAX since la the PAX finished. You know, so well, I think I, mean, I think these are the people that are that are very keen, like myself. That and me, I, I mean, yeah. I'm one of those people. Uh, as soon as like we sort of finished up, hey Drifter, as soon as we finished up, um, you know, last year it was like, fuck yeah, can't wait to come back. Yeah. Uh, hey, white monkey, sorry about your sickly pale monkey on the screen. Um, if anybody wants to send us through some high res images of of a photo or an avatar that they want, we will replace them because this is. Uh, quick and dirty, I've taken a screen capture of your Discord avatar. So quick and dirty. Yeah. So quick and dirty. Mm -hmm. Just how you like it. Oh, yeah. 
Um, um, Drifter, thank you as well for that sub. 13 months, I think, from the look at the screen. I had to look a little 12 bit. Forward. 12 months. 12 a months. 12 months, baby, a whole year. Hey. Happy anniversary, Ooh. Drifter. Let's go. Cool. So that's cool. Looking forward to seeing everybody at PAX. Um, what else I'm looking forward to? Because I'm very excited oh about God, this. You've been frothing oh, this. Mate, I'm, I'm a Star Wars nerd. Like I used to do a YouTube series called Star Wars Playtime. I'd go back and play old Star Wars games. So I love them. And like Fallen Order in particular was such a surprise because uh, you've got to remember where Star Wars games were at that time because we just had two very shit Battlefront games that had just come out. Were they very shit? At the beginning, they were. I don't know. I, no, I've no, been... no, no. That the first Battlefront game was the game that has caused companies to outlaw. Um, sorry, not companies, countries to outlaw loot boxes. Yes, I, I will. That's give, how yeah, shit. Yeah, I, I, you know, we all remember the most downvoted uh, Reddit post in history mm. at one stage, which was from EA themselves mm. responding to all of that stuff. Um, yeah, sure. I, and, and look, they, they. I mean, I had a lot of fun. I had some fun with them as well, but they were just purely multiplayer games, and that's all we got. Like EA spent that how many millions of dollars to mm. to get that ten year contract, and in the end, what they pull out three games, two Battlefronts, and Fallen and Fallen Order. Yeah, well, for that, yes, I completely agree yeah. with you. Um, I I refuse to throw the baby out with the bathwater about the Battlefront games because I liked them. I like we had. We had a lot of fun. Um, you know, it was the only thing that I that really tilted me in those games. What is that? The, the and look, you, it makes sense if you think about Star Wars and the universe and canon, right? But in the game, they needed to balance the special characters better. Oh, yeah. Like seriously, if you were Darth Vader, you're just running around fucking chopping people mm. with your lightsaber. And you could go from no kills to 50 kills and top the leaderboard for the game. Yeah. You know, while you had Darth Vader. And I, that, I was like, this is, this is, this irks me because I think, I do think they needed to balance those characters out better. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I really think Battlefront 2 did incredibly well was jumping into a, a TIE Fighter or an X Wing. Yeah, see, I wasn't, I didn't do that very much in the game. I and spent so much time doing it. Here's a, here's a question for you as well. Did you play the OG Battlefront games? No. Yeah, see, I did. I remember I played so much of the OG Battlefront 2 and it was so much better than what those were. So Even why it's now, good to be an older gamer. Yeah, that's why, it. What, do you, what do you mean though? So why were they so much better? The maps were better. It was, in, instead of having like these loadouts that you had to get from loot boxes and shit like that, you would just, you had your your classes. There was like your, your normal trooper, your, your sniper-y type trooper, an engineer class that could fix vehicles and, and give out some health like if they needed to. I like that. Um, and then each, um, each faction had its own um, own special class as well. So like yeah, okay. the, the clone troopers had like a, a, a jetpack trooper who could fly around. The Empire had dark forces trooper that could do like big jumps. Sounds like a fatter game. Yeah, like it, 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 just, yeah. it was just a much nicer game. And one of the great things they did with it, because I think there was some like third party map building tools with the OG Battlefront, but with Battlefront 2, they released a full blown map editor. So there was a community that was around it that built a lot of maps for it. Did they have godlike characters? Like, did they have your Darth uh, Vader's and your Luke the Battlefront Two did? And, yeah, okay. The first one didn't. Um, yeah, you're right. But like, to my mind, they weren't super overpowered. And they were just fun to play. And like, there was there were, oh, what's the mode? There was like an Ewok killing mode where. Oh yeah, no! Yeah, yeah it's like no. you, you played as like the Not one the one stormtrooper against like. 50 million Ewoks. So is that like a horde mode? Yeah. They had a horde yeah. mode in the game. But, but against the Ewoks... That was great fun, I mean, I would, so good. No, I would, I would go... Oh, that's so sad. Yeah. That makes me mm. feel so sad. The Ewoks are so cute. Mm. Yeah. I used to watch the cartoons when I was a oh. kid. Remember the Ewok cartoons? I do. I remember the yeah. droids cartoon as well. Yeah. You know? Oh, man. I remember the holiday special, but we won't now, talk too now much about Now all I can that. think about is those Ewoks getting killed yeah. in droves. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um... You could also kill Gungans as well, which was probably slightly more cathartic. Slightly more <laughs> cathartic, yeah. Um, but anyway, so that, you know, getting back to Fallen Order, where we were, we've had these two 
multiplayer focused, heavily multiplayer focused games, and then out of nowhere we get Fallen Order. Mm -hmm. This amazing sort of Dark Souls light um, story driven Star Wars game. And it was so much fun. And look, and even looking back on it now, you go, yeah, it was a, a great Star Wars game. As a game itself, you would have said it was a good game, but as a Star, as a Star Wars fan, it was a great Star Wars game. Mm. Um, and just the combat in it and how everything flowed. And, oh, my God, the ending. The ending. Don't spoil it because I haven't finished the game. Yeah. It, but I played a lot of it. I played hours and hours and hours of it. You know what I love the most about it? What? The puzzles. Yes. I was a big fan of puzzles. Yeah. I, like, because, you know, like it... Like a game like like a Star Wars game, once you throw in the history and the canon and all of the powerful tools that you can with the, you know, like your lightsabers and the force and blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's great, right? But most Star Wars games have been, here is your tool set, go and attack that shit and go over there. Whereas the thing that I loved about this game was um, going through ancient ruins using your powers to solve puzzles. Yeah. It really fattened out the game for mm -hmm. me. And I remember not long after um, the Fallen Order had come out, there was a, a statement from someone, I forget who it was, um, that basically called it the Jedi Fallen Order franchise. And we've gone, uh. yes, we're getting a sequel. And then when Jedi Survivor was announced, it, it just looks really, really good. Um, we'll, so are you going to roll tape on we're this? Gonna, we're going to show the, show the trailer. Um, but yeah, it is. It is so cool. Um, well, that's probably a bit loud. Hang on. It's going to bring that down a bit. But yeah, it is. It looks amazing still. Some a lot of the combat looks a little bit similar. Um, but then there's some other bits too. Like there's a bit in the trailer where Cal Kestis picks up. Um, one of the stormtroopers holds him out the front and uses him as like a human shield. Oh wow, that's cool. Because I'm I'm also picking up from this trailer that like Cal is taking a little bit of a darker turn, so it it does feel a little bit like he he may be uh, leaning towards the dark side of the force. No, not Cal. Yeah. Well, I think it needed like. My enjoyment from the first game, like Cal was a pretty bland. Yeah, there wasn't there, there yeah. wasn't yeah, there wasn't much to him. Yeah. But I, I loved the night sister Merrin. She was really cool. And the second sister, who was the main um, bad guy in it for for most of it until right at the end. Um Tidget, and, says I feel like it's the same it's just the same shit over and over. And I you know what? It you're probably it's, not wrong. <laughs> it's a series, right? Yeah. Like it, and and you know you you're not wrong. It is the same shit over and over. But so is everything that's a series of something, mm. right? Like the Legend of Zelda is the same shit over and over. Yeah. There's always a grappling hook. There's always a Hylian shield. There's always plucking the Master Sword, yeah. right? Now, um, it, it, but I think if you're a fan, um, you do. It's the next best thing. Getting getting a sequel to a game that you really enjoyed, as long as they do it right is the next best thing to going back and just playing one of your favourite games yep. again. And, and I think when, when you're doing a sequel, especially one where the combat was as tight and as enjoyable as what Fallen Order was, more of the same isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, and particularly, like, and they've, they've made some changes, some different, um, different force powers by the look of it, and it also looks... Like you can have a companion in it because um, the trailer showed the Night Sister Marin fighting with you at some point. Yep. Um, so that that's really cool. I do like seeing that, um, and the the story as well from the the smidgens that we're getting in the trailer just sounds cool. Like it's five years after Fallen Order, um, and it just it looks cool. I got So Tidge says from a non diehard perspective, it doesn't sell anything that grabs you. Um, so the, interesting point, right? And valid point. Um, I am not a die-hard Star Wars game person, okay? Not, certainly not to the degree that you are. You should see my bookcase at home. Oh, your bookcase is stacked. <laughs> but I love great game mechanics, deep story. I do like an origin story, but mm. deep story. And bringing those game mechanics um, around for exploration and adventure and puzzle solving. Mm. And this ticks a lot of 
four of those points yeah. for me. You know, I like I the Star Wars Fallen Fallen Order. Is it Star, what was the first game? Fallen Order. Thank you. Yeah. Star Wars Fallen Order. Um, see, that's how much of a non fan I am. Yeah. Star Wars Fallen Order was not a game yeah. I was going to get. Yeah. But it was a game that I came across because I was bored one day and I wanted just something different. Ooh. Right, and I hadn't played a Star Wars game for a while, and some people were talking about it, so I, I got it, and I played it for hours because yeah. it turned out to be a, a really, really good game. Um, Crash Team Rumble got a pre-ordered trailer today, following the release date. That's what White Monkey's saying, Ooh. and we'll revisit that later on in the podcast. Hmm. Sorry, I interrupted you. That's okay, but like just everything about Survivor, I'm excited for. Mm. I cannot wait to to get it. And Oh, I'm just seeing 28th of April. Oh, no. I'm going to be in Melbourne for busy? that for DreamHack. Oh, no. Oh, Sorry, I'm not going to DreamHack you anymore. You poor thing. I'm not going to DreamHack. I'm staying home. I'm playing Jedi Survivor. Imagine if this was like if Star Wars Jedi Survivor turned out to be a crossover with Star Wars Jedi and Survivor, the, the Channel 10 series <laughs> of a group of people on the island. And then what we ended up getting was Han Solo, Princess Leia, Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader... And a handful of others, all on an island, competing in Survivor. I would be keen. Like, actually, there was a TV show that was being made by the guys who did Robot Chicken, um, Seth Green and Matt Hitt- Senreich, I think it is, um, called Star Wars Detours. And it got to the point it was pretty much ready to, to go, and then Disney bought Star Wars, and it never saw the light of day. Oh no! But it looked it looked amazing because it was like that sort of sketch comedy with the Star Wars. Well, characters. so so Star Wars chi- a Star Wars chicken. So Robot Chicken did Star Wars. They did yeah, heaps oh, of they Star did, Wars. Like, there was skits. like three or four Star Wars specials. There was as well so many great did. Star Wars yeah. specials and all sorts of shit. It was really really good. Um, that's really disappointing to hear that. That's why. Yeah, I mean. like and, and like it, it got it was almost ready to air, and yeah, Disney bought Star Wars. You know done. what's really interesting about that though, yeah. right? Robot Chicken. Um, Modoc. Yes. Okay, on Disney. Yes. Okay, which is I mean it's on Star, but yeah. it's on Disney, right? Was basically. Marvel robot chicken. Yeah, pretty much. And and Tidget, you are right. Like that that concept we were coming up with is like Total Drama Island or Drawn Together. I've but, never heard of Drawn Together. Um, Drawn Together is where they took like a heap of cartoon stereotypes. Like there was a Betty Boop character that wasn't Betty Boop. It was all black and white, but it was all like that reality TV yep. sort of a vibe. Yeah. And yeah, it was it was cool. And Total Drama Island is another sort of piss take of Survivor, Total Drama so, Island. Yeah. But um, but yeah, no, it was it was good. But yeah, yeah, Modoc, um, Patton Oswalt was the voice of Modoc, um, and that was that was really cool as well. It was very good. Yeah, very very good. But yes, no, very excited to see Jedi Survivor and and uh, hope that hope that it lives up to the hype. So do I. Mm. I hope it's not a shit show. Yep. Um, like ooh. bloody um, Starfield's going to be. Yeah. Or for spoken. People, did did people you hear about? No. What? What, what about so, the spoken? Hang on, wait. Before we get to yeah. that, people were pissed at me for saying for retweet. Remember when the launch trailer came out for mm. Starfield? Yeah. Right. It was like like a couple of weeks ago, and I quote tweeted it and said, "Imagine if this comes out, this <laughs> game is shit." You know what? Well, I copped a few cheeky DMs for that. Did you? <laughs> yep. But you know Maps, what? Maps Star Wars, Mister Mumble. Oh. We, uh, we can't say Mister Mumble without like without. We can't say hello to you without mumbling. Hello, Mister Mumble. You know the only problem with mass Star Wars is there is not a lot of female characters in That's Star Wars. That's a very good point. Yeah. Or if you yeah. if, can you imagine setting Padme up with with somebody that's not Anakin and I mean, what happened there? Well, really, it can't be Math Star Wars. It's got to be the Bachelorette Star Wars. Oh yes. Because yeah. then then you've got something to play with. Mm. I mean, you know. Luke kissed his sister, yeah. so, like, <laughs> like... That would be the first episode of Math Star Wars. Everything's yeah. on the table. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, but, you know, I, I honestly... Starfield looks great. I don't want to play it. Oh, interesting. No, I, I think part of it gets back, you know, like, you know, talking about getting older as gamers yep. again as well. And I've noticed my playing habits have really changed over the last couple of years where... I would rather play a six-hour indie game that's got a really solid concept and be done with it yep. than have to sink 
50, 60, 70, 80, upwards of 100 hours into yeah. a game. It's one of those ones, isn't it, where if you don't keep up, you'll lose motivation for it oh, pretty yeah. quick, I reckon. Um, Alpine Wolf, Farmer Wants a Wife for the Game, which is basically Red Dead Redemption 2. It's basically Red Dead Redemption 2, right? Like, except, you know, you're, you're not doing all the other shit. But it is. it is. It's Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. White Monkey, that's the only I'd, only time I'd probably play Starfield is when it comes to Game Pass. Yeah, okay. And I'd give it a shot and then I'd put it down. I did the same thing with... Actually, no, because I bought um, the first Horizon game and I got about halfway into it and went, I'm bored with this now. And mm. not that it wasn't fun it, there was just a, a few things in it like the game it felt like the game wanted you to be really stealthy but then didn't give you all the proper tools to be stealthy and, you know what I, you know you what know? i why i stopped her like playing horizon the first one was because um too many side quests and places to explore mm. and it took me so far off track that eventually other games came out and i started playing those and then i came back to horizon zero dawn mm. and was like Fuck, what do I do again? Yeah. But I couldn't be stuffed learning everything again. Yeah. If anything, I've learned it all by playing, again, by playing Horizon Forbidden West. Yeah. And I haven't finished the first one. But, hey, here's a cheeky hack for you guys. If you want to um, finish a game without having to finish it, you just wait for the sequel and then you roll the cinematic for the what happened up until this point. And you basically get the entire fucking... 100 hours of a game in 60 seconds. It's and, fantastic. And if the game doesn't have that, then I'm sure somebody on YouTube's put it up. Yeah. Get yeah. a recap that way. Um, Diablo 4 thoughts. I yeah. actually, the only thought I have is that it is a game and it had a closed beta last weekend and an open beta this weekend. You, uh, I found out today that um, Straight is not a fan of Diablo. It's not that... I'm, and I'm only not a fan because... And I'm not I saying that I as really in how dare it. you. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Just, no, I'm and, just curious. And I know, but I, I would just like to clarify that it's not that it's because I don't like it. It's just it's a game series that I haven't picked up before. You know? Diablo was one of my firsts. Um, I I love Diablo. Yeah. I do love Diablo. I But, but I, I love Diablo when you're getting smacked by hordes yeah. and you just get so fucking powerful that you tear strips off everyone. That's what, that's what I really enjoyed about it. Um, uh, you know, like looting dungeons and all that sort of stuff is great. Um, I didn't get a chance to play the closed beta over the weekend, but uh, we did a huge giveaway of the closed beta codes uh, and that popped. One of the codes we had, so we had four codes. One of the codes um, went to, we had one for each platform. And then one went to our writer, Arl Entrick, mm. and Arl Entrick played the closed beta, and he's actually going to pair his thoughts with the closed beta with the full game. Mm. Um, and then he's going to reveal it all in his review of Diablo 4, which will be on GameOnz.com uh, around launch time. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, the, yeah, that's... Like, it, it looks like a great game. Uh, it looks like it, it'd be fun to play, but I, I don't, like I said, I don't... I don't have the time in my day to sink in you know, 50, 60, 70 hours into a game. Or if I do, it has to be a pretty pretty gosh darn special game. We're going to be... Well, old age for us is going to be fucking wicked. You know what I mean? Like when we're 65, oh mind you, you, retirement age will probably be like 80 uh, by then. Yeah. But, but when, when we're 65 and we've got nothing to do... And we can just spend all of our time just catching up all on these fucking games. I'm, I'm picturing it because, like, Dad retired a few years ago and Mum mum said, oh, you reckon you could, like, spare a game, a game console for him? So I gave him my GameCube and a heap of games to go with it. And, like, he said, oh, I don't think it's working properly. And me and my sister were around there one day and we played a game and, like, it was Mario Kart, I think it was, my Double Dash. And, uh, yeah, we were just having fun and everything was working fine. And I think Dad kind of got... A little bit upset that <laughs> that we were showing him up at this game, and he gave it back after that. <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, I, I I'm with you there. I will go. Retirement will be amazing because there will be so many uh, games It'll that we can great. catch up on playing. Oh shit! Tidge has got a baby arriving any day. Oh damn, Tidge! Congratulations, Tidge! A little boy. Oh, oh wow, so that's cool. wonderful news. Mm. Love it when bloody Goa community has this kind of news. That's fucking fantastic. Congratulations, mm. brother. That's awesome. Oh it wow. Is, it does uh as, as gamey game face there, it does kind of put a crimp on your gaming. 
Yeah, it really does. Um, I was a I was a six hour a night, um, six stack, consistent, competitive Overwatch player um, until my first daughter was born. And then once Mila came along, that was it. Had to give it up. Tried playing with her like in my lap and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and just couldn't just couldn't stick with it. So, um, yeah, wow, rating cops a hit. Yeah, if you're a Destiny player, your rating there is going to cop a hit. Goodbye to that stuff. Uh, but it's a season, okay. Yeah. As as a dad, uh, you know it, it is a season. Those times pass, and eventually your kids get to the age where they like you can have your your games back and shit. So yeah. and just wait till and they, they play with enough. you. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like that's start playing with you. That's the coolest part. Like right now, myself and my two daughters, um, we're all playing Hogwarts Legacy. Oh, nice. And we've all got a character, mm. and I think my character's up at like level thirty odd or whatever. And um, uh, both the girls are slowly building their characters. They've both got level ten, level eleven characters, mm. and they're doing the uh, they're doing the main quests and the side quests and all of that sort of stuff, and having an absolute ball. Yeah, absolute cool. ball. Um, Miss, I, I, Mr. I, Mumble, I, Mr. Mumble, I, congratulations I, for me. one more year, Mr. Mumble. Congratulations, Mr. Mumble. <laughs> I do have to say Hogwarts Legacy. I think the most fun I had in that game was at the beginning when you were exploring the school. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I'm having an absolute ball with Hogwarts Legacy. Mm-hmm. I am. I know, look, you know, there's all the history around um, uh, the issues with regards to the game and JK Rowling and so on and so forth. Uh, just plain and simple, taking that out of it for a moment, um, I, it's a fantastic game and I'm having an absolute ball mm-hmm. playing it. And... You know what? Sometimes you sort of look at your kids who are so far removed from um, all of the uh, hard stuff that life brings to a lot of things that are just meant to be fun. Mm -hmm. And they're simply playing it because they're enjoying it and they have no idea about what's going on around the world with regards to that stuff. And I envy them in a way Mm -hmm. sometimes that they can be, uh, you know, they can be in that position. yeah. I always have a laugh at the people that say, oh, why, why do games slash comics slash movies slash TV shows need to be so political these days? They weren't in my days. And go, yes, they were. You just didn't notice because you uh, were too yeah. young. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. fuck, we played Red Alert. Mm. Red Alert was literally the Russians versus the Americans. Mm. It was literally a game of what was happening, but nobody ever heard about it because it was all happening behind closed doors. Yeah, like exactly. that's you know, yeah. there's there's plenty of that and shit. It w- and it wasn't history. spoken about as openly as exactly. it is today. Exactly, you know? exactly. Um, but yeah. yeah, what a game though, Tidge. What, what a, a game. game. What Let's a game. See. How do you reckon like a, a game like Command and Conquer would go with stuff like the the AI st- things that we're seeing coming out these days? What do you mean? Like, like how how do you reckon that Oh, I can't remember the developers of Command and Conquer, but um, how how they may may have used AI as a tool to uh, maybe write some of. Do you think they might have taken that and instead of having like the the full motion video that they've got where they've paid the actors to get in and and do stuff? Do you think they might? Have, I don't know. Might have uh, you know, I mean, today's day and age, like the cinematics are all animated, right? Um, mm-hmm. they're, they're actors acting yeah. in a studio being filmed and shot. But Westwood animated. Studios, thank you, Tidget. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, I, I don't know how that might have played into it. Um, I think if anything, maybe if you know, we got a Command and Conquer twenty twenty three game. Mm-hmm. Um, then all the themes that we grew up with Command and Conquer would stay, but we'd just see a lot more updated shit in it yeah. to reflect the times. Like yeah. AI probably wouldn't be it wouldn't be about AI creating the cinematics for the game. It would be AI is in the game mm. because they're reflecting society now. Yeah. Um, um, I only asked because there was something that uh, Inferno, uh, OG legend of, of Goa as well. OG. He uh, he put in our Discord that apparently Ubisoft is starting to use AI to write dialogue yeah. for some of their NPCs. You know? And I think it's 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 an interesting debate because I think AI as a tool is a brilliant thing. And I think in this case, I don't mind this. I don't I don't mind with getting them to say, just write me some stuff about what this NPC is going to say. I've got no problem with it. Yeah. It's NPCs. Yeah. NPCs say one or two lines when you come across them in the middle of a field somewhere. 
Um, I, I got no issue with it whatsoever. And yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, if it's helping to keep their costs down and that's not coming back on us, then <laughs> more's the better. The technology's there, you may as well use it. Exactly. Um, and I think regardless of whether we have a, you know, an issue with it or not, the technology's there and they're going to use it and the technology's only going to get better. Mm. And we are, we're digital people, we're digital natives. So you're just going to have to deal with it and that's it, get on with it, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to find, so Command and Conquer, Red Alert 2, Actors, because Tidget said um, in chat that uh, parents would have said something if they knew he was playing it. Now, that's also probably true. Although I, I think from parents, it, 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 it may have been a more sort of a, a snide comment like, you remember when the movie Shrek came out? Yep. And it was just so full of those double entendres and all the kids there were going, oh, you know, Shrek saying, oh, there are those who think little of him and you're going, oh, that's because Lord Farquaad's short, you know? And Lord Farquaad. Well, yeah. <laughs> and um, he's short and going, oh, maybe they're thinking something else about that. There's okay. an adult sense of humour. I remember my dad walking in to me playing Command and Conquer Red Alert 2 mm. and Tanya was on the screen. Mm. I don't, I, I not, I don't know. That's uh, Tanya. Cool, cool. Yep, no, I can see that. Yep. All right. If you can, like, we'll show Tanya. Uh, like, to go to, go to Tanya, Command and Conquer, Red Alert 2, Kari Wura. Okay. Oh. Yep. Yeah, no, I, I know her. And, uh, he was like, what game is this? Because, I mean. It, Did he start playing games after that? No. <laughs> He was a peach. He was more of a peach fan. Um, and he, uh, you know, like, I, God, how, how old was I? I was like in year seven, maybe, or year eight when this came out. Um, so I'm just starting to get interested in girls and stuff. And there it is, like ta Tanya. <coughs> For those we'll show it on screen now. There's Tanya. Yeah. Uh, Tanya were, spent the entire time in a holster top looking incredibly attractive. Um, yet yeah, GTA loading screens, Tidget, absolutely. Need for Speed Underground 2 loading screens, Alpine Wolf. <laughs> Are you sure this is a racing game? <laughs> the Smackdown loading screens on PS1. I mean, the you know, just going back to that, like even thinking about the Smackdown and Raw is War that we used to watch, mm. And watch bloody bikini matches and Trish Stratus and um, Deborah and like yeah. like you know the shit like that and what they used to do on those shows, Jerry the King Lawler yelling out puppies. Oh, let's <laughs> see the puppies on his ringside going. Give us the puppies, like you know what I mean. I'm a she's Jesus Christ. I, yeah, plenty of stuff. Plenty of stuff from when we were yeah. kids. That God, it's all it's all a little bit it's all a little bit tighter now. Yeah. Well, it's, and it's also, you know, the, the, your Red Alert had the full motion, like actual proper film Yeah, scenes, absolutely. Whereas you look at something like, like Lara Croft and um, B. Orchid from Killer Instinct. Like, yep, yep. You remember, remember, you know, teenagers frothing over them and you look at them now and go like, everything is so pointy and it's just like, cool, okay. Po polygon boobs. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah. Uh, first time chat from Mozzie DL say you. What's up, brother? Welcome or lady? We're not entirely sure. Um, or non or non-binary. Yeah. I mean, it's what whatever you do, you boo. Um, but feel free to let us know. But welcome to the chat. Welcome to the show. You know what I think it's time for? What's it time? I, for? I think it's time for some games. Well, what time is it? It's seven. It's seven thirty-five in the West. Yeah. Uh, that gives us about 10, 15 minutes to muck around with some games. So I, I think, think that's so. good. What are we playing? What are we, we playing tonight? We're going to be playing thanks to Aussie Broadband for bloody good game of the week. Yeah. As I play with the headphones to get them on, um, we're going to be playing Bayonetta Origin, Cereza and the Lost Demon. So. Have you played the Bayonetta games before? I've, I've mucked around with it. I am not au fait with the Bayonetta games. Mm -hmm. um, I know they've got a huge fan base. Mm -hmm. I know they're great games. They are a lot of fun. A lot of really good hack and slash fun. This game is not that. Um, so when they made this game, they've, they've taken a, a back seat a bit to it all. And 
Are we going to pop this up on the screen? Uh, we were. I was going to finish doing my intro first. Oh, sorry, mate. I'll oh, yeah, shut my mouth. Sorry, sorry, my apologies. It also lets me get into the actual game, you know, yep, rather absolutely. than going through the loading screen. But, um, but yeah, it, it's more kind of a puzzly game, although it does have some, some pretty unique content. So for those that don't know the lore of Bayonetta, Cereza is Bayonetta. Um, and this game you're playing as... A uh, young, young Cereza, and you team up with with a demon called Cheshire, um, as as you go and you're trying to rescue your mum. So let's uh, Aussie Broadband. So thank you again to Aussie Broadband. So you can hey, see. Hey, hey, Aussie this, Broadband. Hey. Um, so for most of the time, you're running around, you're holding on to your little Cheshire demon, and Cheshire then Cheshire demon. Yeah, that's and then you can call him out, and you also control him. So at the moment, I'm using the right thumbstick to control the demon and the left thumbstick to control Cereza. So Tidja just said, I saw the trailer for it and then I was like, that's Bayonetta? What, what does he mean by that? So uh, Bayonetta, I, I always have loved it because it's very classy, very, um, very sexually charged as well. Yeah, I, um, I must admit, I have seen a lot of the Bayonetta characters. Yeah, um, and... and um, no, no, that's... No, I don't want to go that way. I'm not sure which way I'm going at the moment. Um, yeah, so it is it is very different to... Um, to what Bayonetta is. Okay. And, um, and so very, where, are, where are you now? So I'm about 90 minutes to two hours into the game and you're basically... Um, going going through the forest to try and rescue your mum. Um, okay. And I love my mum. Yeah, so do I. Um, so you should uh, love your mum. Your mum's a ripper. Hmm. She's a lovely lady. She is very lovely. They're in Bali at the moment. Oh. Their, it was their wedding anniversary the other day. Aww. So mum and dad. Happy wedding in anniversary. Um, yeah. So Tidget, I will say the art style is still very much on point with um, with the bayonetta stuff. It it is good. It does remind me a little bit, there was a game on the DS that I loved called um, uh, um, The World Ends With, with You and it was a dual control game where you kind of tried to control on the top screen with your buttons and the bottom screen with your stylus. Okay. Um, and that, that's kind of what it feels like. And it does feel a little bit weird at first, White Monkey, when you're controlling the two different characters, but um, it does, like the way the combat is, is really cool. And even like when you're holding on to Cheshire, you can put him out so he grabs things. So like at the moment, I've grabbed this leaf thing and you can jump across. Um, you can also, I don't think it's gonna let me, oh, can I jump up there? I cannot jump up there. Um, ah, here we go. Here's where I need to go. Um, but you can also, there's certain parts, so when there's a certain area that Bayonetta can go through but Cheshire can't, and um, Cheshire can go through some areas that Bayonetta can't. So you you um, you separate and you, you solve some puzzles as well. So, But the, the combat in it has, has just felt really cool because Bayonetta's got this ability um, kind of like a little bit like Witch Time, if you've ever played the proper Bayonetta games, when you basically bind an enemy in, in place. So you can bind an enemy, and then Cheshire can come in and just wreck them. And it's just, it's been such a cool, um, cool little find so far. Like, I'm really enjoying it, and I'm trying to work out where to go. So I'm following these blue wolf footprints. Because um, I have to destroy some elemental barrier. Maybe if you go back, back the other way, back across, mm. right? Um, shift over to the that. Go right. Shift over to that, and then can you go to the edge of this to the left oh. and hook across? You're, you played video games before. Haven't I've played you? video games before. Yeah. It's it's yeah, it's <laughs> it's mind blowing. Um, I've played a few in my time. Mm. So and you come there's a there's a lot of things that you you collect and you craft a few things so like these little bits on the ground and you'll see that red circle that's uh, glowing it means it wants me to, to do this and mm -hmm. then there's a little bit of a mini game where you just have to push the, the stick in the direction of, of the little white crescent things okay, and you yep. get some some more crafting stuff um, but we're just going to keep following the the wolf 
see if we can get to some uh, some combat. Oh, well, this is new. I haven't seen these before. Okay. These are, oh, they're just laser beams that are interrupting mm. your path, right? So, well, what is that? Yep. So, um, the fairies uh, uh, control the forest, and so you're trying to sneak through the forest and not incur the wrath of the fairies. Um, okay. So let's have a look. Where? Oh, ooh. So this is got, this is a beautiful game. It is like the artwork in it is is beautiful. It's just what you would expect from from a Bayonetta title. Is it? Is this like? Does this? Is this a bit lighter? For um, you know, in terms of the artwork, what's the word for it? It doesn't feel as dark. Bayonetta is traditionally quite a dark um, series. Or you know, ooh. in Bayonetta games, is there? So, um... Oh, all right, here we go, some yeah, combat. So, we'll, so, we call out this, and then I will lock him in, and then I can just wail on him and move Bayonetta around. That's really interesting yeah. that you're playing co-op, but by yourself. Yeah, pretty much. So, then so right. right now, you're using Bayonetta to hold him in place, and then Cheshi is attacking. Yep. Does Bayonetta have attacks? Um, Do you always have to use Cheshire? Is I Cheshire think I his name, by the way? yeah Cheshire is okay. Cheshire is the uh, well Cheshire is the um, the stuffed toys name that Bayonetta has and then she summoned a demon and inhabited Cheshire ah, the stuffed well, toys so who it's has it it's Cheshire right. yeah who has it yeah so um, Bayonetta does have so like when the the bit that I put out to grab the jump point this has some um, stunning capabilities that I've unlocked through upgrades yep. Uh, but for the most part, Bayonetta is magical um, and not so much uh, attacking. Yep. Okay. Okay. So this 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 is the white wolf that we're supposed to be following. So these guys are attacking him, and we're, now we're coming in to rescue. This is a bit of a cut scene at the moment. Um, I will say as well, like there's voice acting in it, and the voice acting is is pretty good so far. But it's a bit Breath of the Wild, isn't it? I think that that's kind of like the the cell shading. Yeah, type it, stuff. it, it is yeah. It's the the, the cell shading kind of yeah. artwork. So if, um, but they have managed to put their own spin on it. Yeah, and and um, it is it is very, like I said, it, it's very cool. And if you if you were paying attention there, I held one down and then with bayonetta and used Cheshire to then attack, attack the two or attack two at the same time and just managed to get them in a stun lock. It's it, it is, it's, it's very different to a Bayonetta game, but it is, Cheshire, it's, you cheeky it's a devil. lot of fun. I don't, I don't we've, we've already been playing this game for 10 minutes. Can you we? believe that? that uh, I, I can, like you, you can get lost in this and it's just, like I said, it's a lot of fun um, and, and can, can highly recommend it. My review will be coming up on gameonoz.com, hopefully by the weekend. Um, and yeah, like I can just, Highly recommend that as a ga as a game. It's just cool. It's got got a bit of challenging combat, um, but it's just cute. It's fun. The art style is good. The mu the sound design and music in it is really cool as well. Can't recommend it enough. Nicely so, done. Yeah. But yeah, thank you to Aussie Broadband for for our bloody good game. Let me muck around with it. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me have a go. Oh, wrong one. On, Let me go there. No. to me. All right. So press the the start button. Let's let's Pete have a go. Oh, no, I was meant to actually stand on that thing. Now it's up in the air and it's puffed off. That's so right. a tree's growing and it's going to drop another one. All yeah. right, so here we go. I'm standing on it and now I'm jumping off the ledge. Thank you, Aussie bloody legends. The grass is all wet and slippery. Oh, that happens. You know, it's been raining. It's winter. That's it. And you're in a fairy forest. And you're in a fairy you know. forest. I mean, tell me what fairy forest have you ever been to where the grass isn't wet and slippery? So those tree root looking things over there can be broken by uh, Cheshire. There you go, you bring him out and... Oh shit. So, okay. and Cheshire's oh, health anyway. is, he, he, he does run out of health eventually, but um, oh, you need right trigger to attack. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's a key bind that I'd have to change. Yeah. Because you have to press right shoulder to bring it. Oh, you only have to tap right shoulder. Oh, to, you tap right shoulder to bring him out, and then once he's out, he's out, and then yeah. you... Oh, right okay. Right, yeah. Yeah. yeah, right, okay. Um, oh. Oh, this guy shoots, so... 
Oh, there we go. Go and get him, Cheshire. Um, and if you get close to an enemy, hold down left trigger as Bayonetta, and that'll lock, lock them into place. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, funnily enough, this actually doesn't feel all that alien. Yeah, like uh, it's, it's, this feels quite good. When, when I first saw it, it was just like, oh, I'm not sure I'm going to like this. But the way it plays and what Bayonetta and Cheshire do is, is really quite unique. Yeah. So I, it, it, it does really work out well. <coughs> I think they've done a good job of like maintaining Sand Defender Spriggan, who we're mm. taking on right now. Maintaining like a, a really good. Um... Hang on, I'm just going to bring out Cheshire yep. and have a go. So I'm, I'm going to guess you need to lock him down with Bayonetta okay. and then attack with Cheshire from behind. Alright. So yeah. it, it takes a little while to get there. Move. Now he's right, down. So let's yeah. go around. We're behind him now because he's got a giant shield yeah. and we're smacking him. Okay, so we've done Thornbind. And yeah. now, yeah, now he was knocked down. So the enemies do get stunned. Um, and Bayonetta also has a cooldown on her magic. So that red circle you see next to her after she's uh, used her magic, um, that's the cooldown on her magic. I can tell you what, God, it's, um, it's quite something okay. when you have to uh, manage both uh, Bayonetta and Cheshire yep. uh, in terms of not getting them, not letting them get attacked. It's, <laughs> funnily <laughs> enough, it's it's like it's the it's the controlling characters equivalent of being in a bullet hell game. Yeah. <laughs> um, honestly, because like I'm currently getting attacked on two fronts here and having to control two players while I'm doing it, so that's really interesting. Yep. One of the um, the tactics I started using was I'd use the the, the witch roots to lock down an enemy and then. Then Cheshire will attack the other one. Yep. So I didn't have to worry about uh, that particular enemy. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah but, exactly. and, but combat also comes in spurts like that. Yep. So now you're free to solve the puzzle or just walk around and explore. And yeah, it, it's, it's a very cool game. And I'm, I'm very, uh, very interested in it and I'm having a lot of fun. So, all these funky colours... Dispel are, Illusion. Yeah, all, all these funky colours are now because you've entered the Fey Realm and you'll get to an, an end bit where... Oh, Like I just did? Uh, oh, there's, a, not there's a box here. Why? Oh no, hang on. Yeah, so the treasure chest will be... Uh, can, yeah, so you can't open it from here, but usually you'll get into an area like this and you'll traverse through and you'll stop stop something um, and then this area will lighten up and you'll be able to, to do other things so white monkey i am a natural gamer i i'm just gonna throw it out there born um, for it born for it born this way baby yeah, uh, so i did i see you do this before where cheshire smashed that no uh, not that not a gate like that mm. So there'll be something. If you want to bring Cheshire back in, you can tap the L button and uh, there you go. And come back in. Yep. Yeah, okay. Interesting. So how do I get if I well, can through this thing? I think if you head upwards a little bit in that area, you might find. Uh, well, you might find something new. You might find something a little oh, bit let's, different, let's a little bit unusual. Uh, oh. So can you use Cheshire to? Let's get rid of in. that, maybe? Let's have a look. Now you come, Cheshire. No, he doesn't do shit. Cheshire ain't doing shit. He ain't care. Yeah, gamey game face, I agree with you. The, the watercolour painting. Um, I don't know if you, you're much of a Transformers fan, but Transformers have released a, um, a series of toys called Shattered Glass. Oh. And... They are variants, they're variant colours on all of the Transformers, the Autobots and Decepticons. And they're very much like this. They actually remind me a lot of this sort of art style. It's very cool. Oh, nice. Uh, Alright, maybe we call it a night, because mm. otherwise I'm going to be running around here and poor White Monkey uh, is struggling mm. and needs to get some shut-eye, as I imagine a lot of people who are watching this do. Mm. Um, me but I'll too. jump out of here. You too? <laughs> Mate, me too. <coughs> I've got I've got wrestling training tomorrow, so cool. I need to be plumb. 
But that is Bayonetta Origins, uh, Cereza and the Lost Demon. Thank you, Aussie Broadband, because that is our bloody good game of the week. Appreciate it, Aussie Broadband, and appreciate you. Um, anything else? Uh, no, I think I think that that's it. We've talked about a lot of things. Don't forget as well, if you uh, want to get in the running for this Elite Trainer Box, jump jump on, sign up for our Patreon. Um, exclamation support in chat, and you should be able to get the link for that. And also, don't forget, if you're not a Patreon, you can also jump on our Twitter and like and retweet and leave a comment on the post to win a copy of WWE 2K23 as well. Yeah, um, big shout out again to our patrons, Resonance, uh, Gamma, Simi, White Monkey, Firestorm, Drifter, Star Saber. Really appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Thank you so much for... Um, dipping into your pockets and supporting Game on Australia through being patrons. It is very, very much appreciated. One of you will win that next week. We'll draw that next week. And then if you're a fan of Lego, um, that is, it's a very special coming together of prizes. I'm going to say prizes, all right? Um, there's, there's actually going to be a bit of a stack for somebody to win next month who are in our Patreon. So, um, very, very cool. Uh, okay. It's been fun, man. Um, have a great week and a great weekend, everybody. The new Lord of the Rings Lego. Oh no, God. it's not the new Lord of the Rings Lego. I will say that now. Um, but it's a, it's a good... It's good. I think, I think it's good. You'll have to watch next week and find out what it is. Absolutely. Yeah. We will cool. let you know. Uh, Jim, always a pleasure, brother. Always a pleasure. And remember, don't forget to save. Don't forget to save. I remember this week. Woo! Bye. Bye.